How's it going, people? Well, let me try a little something different. It's a barking sheep, and beware of sheep, definitely. It's a Chardonnay from Argentina. I don't know. I don't remember where I picked this up. It's been in the fridge for a little while. I'm kind of uh, unschooled when it comes to wine and all that. Well, it comes with a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. If anybody wants me to drink more wine, give me some good recommendations. Corporal Boozers. The Arch. Talk with me. Usually, uh, yeah, you got one that gives you a little bit of leverage. Yeah. Crisp and clean. Should have got a red wine, but I couldn't pass up on the title. Yeah. <laughs> Barking sheep. Isn't that what we listen to all the time? Barking sheep. And you definitely need to beware. <laughs> There's not much to drink to in the next couple of chapters. I'm thinking about lumping them together into one video if I can. So let's just get with it. There's like one whole drink and here it is. <laughs> well, let's read the uh, let's read the heading. Uh, Moroni's second epistle to Pahoran complains of neglect and repeats himself a lot. Uh, demands immediate help on peril of reprisal. I love it. One. And it came to pass. Let's see. Mmm. Nice fruity bouquet. Nice. Alright, there's the only drink. So I just keep my whistle wet for the rest of this video. It came to pass that he wrote again to the governor of the land, who was Pahoran, that's his name, and these are the words which he wrote, saying, Behold, I direct mine epistle to Pahoran. So this one isn't for uh, common consumption. He wrote a second epistle so he could tell how pissed off he is. In the city of Zarahemla, which you established in the last epistle, who is chief judge and governor over the land, and also to all those who have been chosen by this people to govern and manage the affairs of this war, too. For behold, I have somewhat to say unto them by the way of condemnation. For behold, ye yourselves know that ye have a, been appointed to gather together men and arm them with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war of every kind as well as all manner. and sent forth against the Lamanites in whatsoever parts they should come into our land. Don't forget the holy the holy hand grenade. <laughs> Three. And now, behold, I say unto you that myself and also my men and also Helaman and his men have suffered exceeding great sufferings. That's an oxymoron I had to drink to. Hit a cork. 
They've suffered exceeding great sufferings, yea, even hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and all manner of afflictions of every kind. For, but, behold, were this not all we had suffered, we would not murmur nor complain. There's more. Five, but behold, great has been the slaughter among our people, yea, thousands have fallen by the sword, while it might have been otherwise, been, other, where it might have otherwise been, if ye had rendered unto our armies sufficient strength and succor for them. Yea, great has been your neglect towards us in imparting of your substance. Six, and now, behold, we desire to know the cause of this exceeding great neglect. Yea, we desire to know the cause of your thoughtless state. Seven, can you think to sit upon your thrones in a state of thoughtless stupor while your enemies are spreading the work of death around you? Yea, while they are murdering thousands of your brethren. Eight, yea, even they who have looked up to you for protection, yea, have placed you in a situation that ye might have succored them. Ye got suckered. <laughs> yea, ye might have sent armies unto them to have strengthened them and have saved thousands of them from falling by the sword. See, now he's just hammering the same points home over and over again. Um, sorry. Nine. But, behold, this is not all. Ye have withheld your provisions from them. So it's all. Yeah, he's bitching about everything after all. That's What else are you going to bitch about? <laughs> In a war. Supplies and reinforcements are pretty much. All right, there's other things. You know, I'm no expert, but... Anyway, chime in if you want. Uh, <sighs> and so much that many have fought and bled out their lives because of their great desires, which they had for the welfares of this people. Yea, and this they might have done when they were about to perish with hunger because of your exceeding great neglect towards them. He's pissed. Did you hear that? That's Moroni. He's pissed. Ten. And now, my beloved brethren. Yeah, that's what you're feeling right now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yea, and ye ought to have stirred yourselves more diligently for the welfare and the freedom of this people. But behold, ye have neglected them, insomuch that the blood of thousands shall come upon your heads for vengeance. Yea, for know not to God were all their cries and all their sufferings. 11. Behold, could ye suppose that 
ye could sit upon your thrones. And because of the exceeding goodness of God, ye could do nothing, and he would deliver you? I don't think about him at all. Behold, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. Twelve. Do ye suppose that, because of so many of your brethren have been killed, it is because of their wickedness? No, it, don't, it doesn't work that way this time. This is different. Because <laughs> he says so. I say unto you, if ye have supposed this, ye have supposed in vain. Actually, I didn't think of it until you brought it up, dickhead. <laughs> For I say unto you, there are many who have fallen by the sword, and behold, it is to your condemnation. So he's kind of just spinning his wheels and saying the same shit, just a little different each time. Thirteen. Hmm. Wine is nice. Wine is fine. Whiskey is quicker. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen. For the Lord suffereth the righteous to be slain, that his justice and his judgment might come upon the wicked. Therefore ye need not suppose that the righteous are lost because they are slain. But behold, they do enter into the rest of the Lord their God, according to you, and some other people whose words I'm expected to take on faith. Fourteen. And now, behold, I say unto you, I fear exceedingly that the judgments of God will come upon this people, because of their exceeding slothfulness, yea, even the slothfulness of our government, and their exceeding great neglect towards their brethren, yea, towards those who have been slain. 15. For were it not for the wickedness which first commenced at our head, we could have withstood, withstood the enemies that uh, they could have gained no power over us. 16. Yea, had it not been for the war which broke out among ourselves, yea, were it not for those kingmen who caused so much bloodshed among ourselves, yea, at the time we were contending among ourselves, if we had united our strength as we hitherto have done, yea, had it not been for the desire of power and authority which those kingmen had over us, had they been true to the cause of our freedom and united with us, and gone forth against our enemies, instead of taking up their swords against us, which was the cause of so much bloodshed among ourselves. Yay! I don't know why. I guess that means yes. <laughs> Yay! If we had gone forth against them in the strength of the Lord, we should have dispent, we should, we should have dispersed our enemies, for it would have been done according to the fulfilling of his word. 17. But behold, now the Lamanites are coming upon us, taking possession of our lands, and 
They are murdering our people with the sword. Yea, our women and our children, and also carrying them away captive, causing them that they should suffer all manner of afflictions. 18. But why should I say much concerning this matter? 19. Or is it that ye have neglected us because ye are in the heart of, the, of our city, and ye do not cause food to be sent unto us, and also men to strengthen our armies? 20. Have ye forgotten the commandments of the Lord your God? Yea, have ye forgotten the captivities of our fathers? Have ye forgotten the many times we have been delivered out of the hands of our enemies? 21. Or do ye suppose that the Lord will still deliver us while we sit upon our thrones and do not make use of the means which the Lord has provided for us? 22. Yea, will ye sit in idleness while ye are surrounded with thousands of bows, yea, and tens of thousands, who do also sit in idleness, while there are thousands round about in the borders of the land who are falling by the sword, yea, wounded and bleeding. 23. Do ye suppose that God will look upon you as guiltless while ye sit and behold these things? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Now I would that ye should remember that God has said that the inward vessels shall be cleansed first, and then shall the outer vessel be cleansed also. Sounds like you need an enema, bro. <laughs> 24, and in a shower. <laughs> and now, a baptism, excuse me. And now, except ye do repent of, of, of that which ye ha have done, and begin to be up and doing, and send forth food and men unto us, and also unto Helaman, that he may support those parts of our country which he has regained, and that we may also recover the remainder of our possessions in these parts. Behold, it will be expedient that we contend no more with the Lamanites until we have first cleansed our inward vessel. Yay! <laughs> Even the great head of our government needs a high colonic. <laughs> That's disgusting. I think I'll have some more barking sheep. That'll help. Damn. Isn't that pretty music? You should buy the soundtrack. Alright. 24. And now, except ye do repent of that which ye have done, and begin to be up and doing, and send forth food and men unto us, and also unto Helaman, that he may support those parts of our country, which he has regained, and that we may also recover the remainder of our possessions in these parts. Be behold, it will be expedient that we contend no more with the Lamanites and until we have first cleansed our inward vessel. Yay! Even the great head of our government could use a high colonic, I guess. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it's in the gold book, what can I say? Clean your inward vessel. 
25. And accept ye grant mine epistle, and come out and show unto me a true spirit of freedom, and strive to strengthen and fortify our armies, and grant unto them food for their support. Behold, I will leave a part of my free men. He's got some free men there, huh? Well, who's the rest of the people? to maintain this part of our land, and I will leave the strength and blessings of God upon them. That'll help. It's like armor, I hear. It's almost as good as that magic Masonic underwear. That none other power can operate against them. 26. And this because of their exceeding faith and their patience in their tribulations. 27. And I will come unto you, Pahoran, Biach. And if there be any among you that has a desire for freedom, yea, if there be even a spark of freedom remaining, Behold, I will stir up insurrections among you, even until those who have desires to assert power and authority shall become extinct. That's expensive. We tried that. 28. Yea, behold, I do not fear your power nor your authority. But it is God whom I fear, and it is according to his commandments that I do take my sword to defend the cause of my country, and it is because of your iniquity that we have suffered so much loss. 29. Behold, it is time, yea, the time is now at hand that except ye do bestir yourselves in the defense of your country and your little ones, the sword of justice doth hang over you, yea, and it shall fall upon you and visit you even to your utter destruction. 30. Behold, I wait for assistance from you. And except ye do administer unto our relief, behold, I come unto you. Even in the land of Zarahemla, I know where you live, Biot. Be afraid, be very afraid. And smite you with the sword. Maybe kick your ass a little bit first. Uh, and so much that ye can have no more power to impede the progress of the people in the cause of freedom. Well, that'll do it, man. <laughs> Exterminated him. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I imagine Bohorn shitting his pants after you're reading this. Uh, he doesn't need that uh, inward cleaning of his vessel after all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 31. For behold, the Lord will not suffer that ye shall live and wax strong in your iniquities to destroy his righteous people. Also, you're just doing God's dirty work because he just can't send a lightning bolt down or something or make a wall fall on him or something. Come on. I mean, if you see those Final Destination movies, you know, God could do better than that if he exists. He needs some fucked hard to go stab a guy with a sword. Not that he ever does it, but it's a good time to bring that point up. All right. 32. Behold, can you suppose that the Lord will spare you 
and come out in judgment against the Lamanites when it is the tradition of their fathers that has caused their hatred? Yea, and it has been redoubled by those who have dissented from us. While your iniquity is for the cause of your love of glory and the vain things of the world. Well, this, this Moroni is definitely not a prophet. <laughs> He's totally off the mark here, but this is funny. 33. Yea, uh, 33. Ye know that ye do transgress the laws of God, and ye do know that ye do trample them under their feet. Behold, the Lord saith unto me, Ugh. How'd that happen? I'm drinking wine. Oh, well. If those whom ye have appointed your governors do not repent of their sins and iniquities, ye shall go up and ye shall go up and battle against them. 34. And now Behold, I, Moroni, am constrained. Oh, that high colonic ought to help you. <laughs> According to the covenant which I have made to keep the commandments of my God. Therefore, I would that ye should adhere to the word of God and send speedily unto me of your provisions and of your men and also to Helaman. 35. Uh. And behold, if ye will not do this, I come unto you speedily. For behold, God will not suffer that we should perish with hunger. Therefore, he will give unto us of your food, even if it must be by the sword. Hmm. Now see that ye fulfill the word of God. 36. Behold, I am Moroni, your chief captain. I seek not for power, but to pull it down. I seek not for honor of the world, but for the glory of my God, and the freedom and welfare of my country, tis of thee. And thus I close mine epistle, and... What the fuck? I want to do this other one. It's real quick. 61. Pahoran's patriotic reply. I have to read this again. He ex exonerates himself and the free men. Nephite state uh, tottering. Government appeals for military aid against rebels. 1. Behold, now it came to pass. I forgot that was there. Well, there was a drink. Ugh. That soon after Moroni had sent his epistle unto the chief governor, it's amazing it reached him and not the wrong people. Uh, well, that's right, excuse me. It was written that way to happen that way. I mean, it was God's will, or at least the author of this. <laughs> His epistle unto the chief governor. He received an epistle from me, Pahoran, the chief governor, and these are the words which he received. Two, I, Pahoran, who am the chief governor of this land, do send these words unto Moroni, 
written on gold. The chief captain over the army? Behold, I say unto you, Moroni, I had to say his name again, taking up more space, that I do not joy in your great afflictions. Yea, it grieves my soul. Three, but behold, there are those who do joy in your afflictions. Yea, insomuch that they have risen up in rebellion against me, and also those of my people who are free men. Yea, and those who have arisen, those who have risen up are exceeding numerous. For, and it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity. <clears throat> For the, they have used great flattery, and they have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore affliction among us. They have withheld our provisions and have daunted our freedom, our freemen, that they have not come unto you. Five. And behold, they have driven me, me out before them, and I have fled to the land of Gideon with as many men as were possible that I could get. Six. And behold, I have sent a proclamation throughout this part of the land. And behold, they are flocking to us daily to their arms in the defense of their country and their freedom and to avenge our wrongs. Seven. And they have come unto us insomuch that those who have arisen up in rebellion against us are set at defiance. Yea, insomuch that they do fear us and durst not come out amongst us to battle. Eight. And they have got possession of the land or the city of Zarahimla. They have appointed a king over them, and he hath written unto the king of the Lamanites, in the which he hath joined an alliance with him, in the which he hath agreed to main the city of Zarahimla, as L. Ron Hubbard would pronounce it, which maintenance, he supposes, will enable the Lamanites to conquer the remainder of the land, and he shall be placed king over this people, when they shall be conquered over the Lamanites. 9. And now, in your epistle, you have censured me, but it mattereth not. I am not angry. I, but do rejoice in the greatness of your heart. I, Pahoran, do not seek for power, save only to retain my judgment seat, that I may preserve the rights and the liberties of my people and lord over them. My soul standeth fast in that liberty in the which God hath made us free. 10. And now, behold, we will resist wickedness, even unto bloodshed. We would not shed the blood of the Lamanites if they would, uh, if they would stay in their own land. Yeah, really. 11. We would not shed the blood of our brethren if they would not rise up in rebellion and take the sword against us. Twelve, 
we would subject ourselves to the yoke of bondage if it were requisite with the justice of God. It is. Or if he should command us so to do. 13. Uh. Behold, but behold, he doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. The soldier's almost dead. Says this uh, soundtrack. Okay, something else is coming up. I forgot what it is, but I'll get in trouble for it, whatever it is. But behold, he doth not command us that we shall subject ourselves to our enemies, but that we should put our trust in him, and he will deliver us. 14. Therefore, my beloved brother Moroni, let us resist evil. And whatsoever evil we cannot resist with our words, yea, such as rebellions and dissensions, let us resist them with our swords, that we may retain our freedom, that we may rejoice in the great privilege of our church and in the cause of our Redeemer and our God, Fifteen. Therefore, come unto me speedily with a few of your men and leave the remainder in the charge of Lehi and Tiancum. Give unto them power to conduct, conduct the war in that part of the land according to the Spirit of God, which is also the Spirit of freedom, which is in them. 16. Behold, I have sent a few provisions unto them, that they might not perish until ye can come unto me. 17. Gather together what Soever force ye can upon your march hither, and we will go speedily against those dissenters in the strength of our God, according to the faith which is in us. Yeah, and might makes right. Why isn't God just doing a miracle? He hasn't done it yet. I mean, a few angelic visits, which sound about like the testimonials uh, in the prefaces and introductions in this book. Uh, yeah, no, nothing special though. <laughs> Yea, we will go forth against them with the strength of the Lord, and we will put an end to this great iniquity. 19. And now, Moroni, I do joy in receiving your epistle. For I was somewhat worried concerning what we should do, whether I should be just in, it should be just in us to go against our brethren. 20. But ye have said, except they repent, the Lord hath, the Lord hath commanded you that ye should go against them. 21. See that ye strengthen Lehi and Tiancum in the Lord. Uh, tell them to fear not, for God will deliver them. Yea, and if he doesn't, it's his will. It's just his will, that's all. It's part of his bizarre, inscrutable master plan that he made at the beginning of time. Or maybe a little before. <laughs> uh, 
Yea, all those who stand fast in that liberty wherewith God hath made them free. And now I close mine epistle to my beloved brother, brother Moroni. And that's it for 61. 62 looks a little thirsty. Let's see. Yeah, 62 is hella thirsty. I hope you'll join me in 62, where I'll try some, to find a way to make this interesting. Ah, very nice. Barking sheep. Beware of the sheep. Great advice. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. Because I really am wishing hard for that. Let's see if it works.